All right, let's let's close off this episode 11 with our top five fantasy weapons. Now, I don't, I mean, we kind of lightly top or touched upon what we were going to add to this list. Obviously, we kind of ruled out sci-fi weapons like guns and bazookas. I don't know. Lasers. We did. Maybe not. <laughs> well, anyway, so it's just fantasy weapons. Obviously, we have different criteria here. So <laughs> You'll be laughing. All right, fair Who's enough. <laughs> all right, maybe I talked to my head and I didn't actually talk to you. But all right, so fantasy weapons, it's apparently. Uh, unrealistic. Are, unrealistic are weapons. Then. Maybe realist. I don't know. <laughs> well, then, as we talk, I might Cole add... weapons. I might add a few uh, honorable mentions. Okay. Based on the type of stuff you're adding. So, <laughs> let, let's go and start with you. What's your number five? Uh, proton pack. <laughs> <laughs> From Ghostbusters? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start adding some honorable mentions. <laughs> but go ahead and explain why. I mean, it's just cool. It catches ghosts. I mean, I guess you need a trap to do something instead of you don't want to just hold Slimer in the air the whole time while he's tearing up the chandelier. But uh, did you I, like it better? I think we talked about this. You liked it better in the original movies than the new ones, right? They almost used them like guns in the new movie. Yeah, I mean, there was actually in the new movie they had a few devices that were cool. They had they came out with several devices, like new stuff, but uh, a few of them were just too over the top that made it ridiculous. Um, but yeah, just I don't know that seeing them, that crazy looking Ray come out and you know shooting Stay Puff <laughs> and you know whatever, whatever they were trying to grab and hold on to. It was just uh, it was a really cool thing. I guess it's not even really a weapon. I guess it was a tool. But yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, I mean, you cross the streams and <laughs> <laughs> and blow stuff up. Yeah, <laughs> make it up. make it rain marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> well, my number five. It's definitely a fantasy weapon. <laughs> it is the glaive from Kroll. You know, I was talking about that. Were you? Yeah. When? Uh, no, I did. Okay. That was one of the weapons that I said uh, when I was looking at list that uh, I'd never seen Kroll. But if I had or was familiar with it, that would have been one because it was just so. Oh, so you didn't know about it before you looked this stuff up? No. Oh man, I remember. It's funny. I remember the VHS cover of Crawl, and he's holding it. Yeah. Well, no, actually, the one I saw was like a skull. I remember, like, it was a weird looking like skull cave or something uh, on the oh, front yeah. of it. Yeah. And um, I just always remember seeing it in uh in the uh we went to a Roadrunner is what our uh <laughs> local you know VHS rental store was called. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, I just always remember seeing that cover and was like, oh, that seems like. I like fantasy stuff, but dad never rented it or maybe he did and I didn't watch it with him. I don't know, but I, I don't remember. I feel like it was early nineties. The last time I watched this, I was really young. And the only thing I remember is being really sad because, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> Actually, I don't care. If right. He, <laughs> yeah. If, if I haven't watched it by now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he controls this thing, I think with his mind, he actually like flings it out there and it just stays out and cuts stuff up. Right. And then he brings it back to him. But in the um, in the end, it gets stuck in the monster, like the final boss, basically. Right. And then he can't get it out of him. He can't get it back. And I remember being really sad for some reason over this. But I just remember actually having a toy of this thing a long time ago. And it was just it was just the coolest thing at that time. Right. You know, I, I think my list is a bunch of nostalgia, sort of. Or there's a reason for it. I'm not trying to put these in an the, order that is like, this is the most definitive, definitive fantasy weapon list ever. No, yeah. I mean, obviously, I, I <clears throat> don't know that anyone would put Proton Pack on, <laughs> yeah. on their list. Of, I guess I guess it's now the top five fantasy and sci-fi weapons. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must have misunderstood something. No, you're uh, fine. You're fine. You uh, want to do your four? Or? Yeah, my number four <laughs> is, uh, I, this was a PlayStation game. I believe this is fantasy. It has fantasy in the title. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the gun blades that Squall and Seifer used were just that opening sequence of them two fighting each other. Yeah. Was, that was just so badass. Uh, yeah. You know, watching watching them two fight with them things, and then you used it in the game. It could shoot as you swung with it to do. You know, when your timer filled up or whatever on it, and yeah, 
Well, I think every time you hit, oh, you maybe just, it was. You yeah, just hit the L two button or R two button. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, <clears throat> that was just a really neat weapon. So I fell yeah. in love with those things. Yeah, I think that uh, the gun blade would have made my list had I. <laughs> now, it probably would have been on my list if we were doing fantasy and sci fi weapons, <laughs> but as it stands, it's in my honorable mentions. So I pretty much won't go over it then. But yeah, the gun blade is just awesome. Right. Uh, that was. It's such a simple, stupid concept, but when Squaresoft put it in the game, it's kind of like, whoa, whoa, this is this is actually really cool. It's pretty neat. Why is he wearing like a lady's jacket? Anyway, <laughs> anyway move. <laughs> so it's got, it's got fur. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, my number four, uh, and I, if there's any fans out here, you can yell at me later for the pronunciation, but it's Sakapa, <laughs> Sakabato, Bato. I don't remember. It's the you ever seen Rurouni Kenshin? What is it? Rurouni Kenshin. It's an anime. No. All right. Uh, they also did a Samurai X, uh, ser- or not series, but they cha- took the uh, the original movies from um, Jap- Japan and they're called Samurai X. Okay. But the TV series is called Rurouni Kenshin. His name's Kenshin. Anyway, okay. so his sword is a katana, but the katana is actually. The blade is on the backside of things because the person who, who made the blade, um, I think it was one of his final weapons he forged, but he didn't want to make any more weapons of violence. And so it can still kill, but mostly they're hitting with the front part, which is blunt force. Right. So he could kill if he needs to, or do something like cut rope and things like that. Cause the blade, the, the uh, sharp parts on the inside instead of the outside. Right. Anyway, it also fits with uh, Kenshin because he basically was an assassin or whatever he was, and then he turned away from that. So it kind of fits him as well. It's just a really cool katana, and it was the best way I can get katana on this list. Okay. But it is probably one of my favorite katanas next to Sephiroth's, which is... I was just I, I was expecting <laughs> that to be on yours because I thought of it earlier, and I was like, oh, that would actually have been a good one to throw on here. Yeah, I probably would have thrown it on here, but I actually think that Sephiroth's uh sep whatever he his uh sword is probably a little bit like there's no story behind it i don't think right it's just a giant katana um and kenshin's actually has like a cool story behind it right so his his one okay uh my number three (laughs) here we go (laughs) sci-fi it's a zf1 is this a plane what no it is. Uh, you ever seen Fifth Element? <laughs> <laughs> the gun with all the the gun with all the crazy stuff on it. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, that would have been <laughs> on my list. That thing is amazing. See, I think what got me on the on this because you said something about the Doom gun, whatever gun was in Doom that was like real crazy. Well, the funny thing about that, the BFG nine thousand. Yeah. Which is also on my, <laughs> which is now on my honorable mentions. But, uh, you know, the funny thing about this is we were talking on the phone and I basically said, like, I wouldn't, the, the exact phrasing I think was, yeah, we're talking about fantasy weapons, blah, blah, blah. Like, I wouldn't put the BFG 9000 on this list because it's more sci-fi. Oh, okay. So I completely, misheard. I completely misheard you. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, well, Either way, I mean that that that's uh, one of my favorite parts of uh, Fifth Element is him showing that gun to the uh, Mandalorian. Oh, we're, I got the Mangalores. Sorry, Mangal- I, wrote, I had to write it down. Not the Mandalorians. Yeah, not the Mandalorians. The Mangalores, and uh, I don't know that, and especially that. Um, I think my favorite one he had was the uh, the memory machine gun where you shot the first bullet, but you could aim anywhere and, and it, it would continue to them. The, yeah, he starts <laughs> shooting at them, but it's going behind them. <laughs> I mean, and it's just got so much cool stuff. It's got the flamethrowers and some kind of ice machine or uh, poison darts. It's got a net on it. I mean, it's just got everything. It's ridiculous. There's no way all that fits on that little gun, but no. it did in the movie, and it was uh, really, really cool. So this is probably one Blu-ray that I need to purchase. I'd really like to have this on Blu-ray. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, it's such a good movie. My number three is Ash Kandi, Great Sword of the Brotherhood from World of Warcraft. <laughs> really? Yes. Do you remember this weapon? No. All right, so it's like a bla- it's like a giant great sword, but it had like this snake handle. Little snake, it drops off Nefarian. 
Oh, I never did any of those raids or anything, um, so I, would, I wouldn't know. Man, I, I like at the time I was heavily raiding more it, dots, more dots, more dots. At the time I was heavily raiding, it was around the time that you know we I did it was original wow. Uh, wow. I right. did molten core and I did nefarian or I'm uh, sorry, blackwing lair and pretty much um um the expansion burning, <laughs> burning crusade or burning yeah. Yeah, so I, I mean, those really stick in my mind, and Ashkandi was, like, even though I play a rogue, I couldn't equip it, that was, like, one of the coolest-looking greatswords ever. It was just amazing looking. I actually bought a Chinese, like, rip-off hmm. uh, die-cast model of it and gave it to my brother for Christmas one year, because he had he ha- uh, had it, and, uh, yeah, really cool. Need. So, uh, there's probably a ton of weapons from WoW I can put on this list. But- Roll need. Real need. Yeah. <laughs> uh, me? Yep. Number two. Uh, <laughs> maybe this is cheesing out a little bit, but I mean, these are cool uh, lightsabers. Yeah, I figured that now that we're doing fantasy sci-fi, <laughs> that was going to be on the list. Yeah, so, I mean, they got all kinds of purposes. You can melt steel walls with them. They cut people in half. And yeah. Just, and, I mean, as a kid. Yeah, I mean, watching lightsaber battles were awesome. I mean, it's, yeah. Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I screwed the list up. No, you're fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We'll do this again, <laughs> but you do fantasy and I'll do sci-fi. Okay, that works. All right. Uh, yeah, lightsabers are pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I could see this being number one on most lists. Uh, whenever I was checking, it was. Yeah. I mean, this it's just, just it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, the fact that so many kids are going around wielding these toys and stuff like that, it's just. Hugely popular. It's a lot of power and a little thing. Yeah. Fair enough. That's what she said. <laughs> there, I did Where's it. Eric? Eric's not on the show. I did it for him. Yeah. All right. So my number two is Quicksilver, which uh, most people aren't going to know what this is, but it's a steampunk sword from War Machine that Striker, who's part of the Signarian army, wields. And I always thought that was cool because one year at, at Gen Con... Privateer Press actually made a full size uh, of this blade. Really? It was incredibly heavy. Like, you could not even lift it. It was like 300 pounds. Wow. I don't know. I don't know if it was that much, but I I, kinda, I think that you could lift it up. It's just you couldn't hold it in a wielding position. Right. It was so heavy. Uh, this sword is just really cool. It, it's it The design of it's pretty neat, and plus it's steampunk, and it's War Machine. Right. So... It had to be on the list. <laughs> What's your number two? Uh, I did my number two. Oh, so it's time for honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. All uh, right, go ahead and do one. Uh, one for me again. The noisy cricket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from, men in black. Yeah, men in black. Yeah. Yep. That was a tiny little gun with a uh, again not so tiny. <laughs> yeah, a lot of power. Uh, I put the gun blades on here, and I put the BFG 9000, which I talked about, okay. which is from Doom. For those who don't know, it's the pretty much the most powerful weapon of the game. Uh, my only other honorable mention I put, uh, since I was doing fantasy, is Excalibur. Okay, not from a a of a you know a a story you know like the King Arthur kind of Excalibur, right? Like the typical in the in the stone. But the the immense amount of pop culture that it has provided. Right. I mean, it's pretty much in most Final Fantasy games as one of the coolest weapons you can get. Yeah. It's in tons of RPGs. Uh, even, I mean, there, I, there's some anime where like the one of the mechs is called Excalibur. Right. I mean, it's just it's a it the name first off is just awesome. Right. And the whole legacy behind it is is just really really fun. Yeah. So. Is that all your honorable mentions? Yep. Okay, well, I'll, I'll blast through a few of mine then. <laughs> I, had a, I had a couple. Uh, I went with, because uh, it's not all that awesome, but it was just cool that it was done this way, but Ash's chainsaw hand. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just a chainsaw, but the fact that he put like the <clears throat> the thing on his shirt to be able to, to uh, yeah, start get a gun, to, yeah, to start it. Um, again, guns. Uh, the M56 smart gun and an M41A pulse rifle from Aliens. Oh, yeah. That thing's awesome. The smart gun was the big, huge one that you right. had to like wear the waist thing yeah. on. And the, the pulse rifle was just cool anyways. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the Yondu arrow from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. 
the uh the arrow that he could like just point oh. and it would like shoot through everything. Well, you know what? If we're gonna do uh fantasy sci-fi weapons, I will add one more honorable mention. All right. The uh oh man, what's it called? The monofilament line from Johnny Mnemonic or uh I can't even think of the movie. Uh, I know um, Keanu Reeves. Yeah, what was that? Johnny Mnemonic, right? Was it Johnny Mnemonic? I, I want to say that's what it was called. Well, anyway, the guy had it built into his hand. He had a um, a thumb. He he pull his fingernail out, and it was like it was called a monofilament line, and it basically was a razor line, like, really, like a string. Yeah, but it was a laser. So he'd spin it around. Did you ever you ever see this? No. Oh man, it is one of the coolest things ever. I mean, he ends up getting killed by it, but whatever. <laughs> it it basically is just a a string, but it's a laser. So it's basically all the cool stuff of a lightsaber as a whip, in a way. So he would he would just solve. Yeah, things. Johnny Mno- Johnny Mnemonic. Mnemonic, yeah, M N E M O N I C. Okay, yeah. So it was Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, it's kind of like a. Um, a Netrunner world like Shadowrun, stuff okay. like that. It's very Blade Runner-ish. Right. And But yeah, the guy would pull out his fingernail, it's like, and he would swing it around and stuff and cut things apart. Wow. It was awesome. Hmm. That was like pretty much the coolest part of the movie. Wow. So, moving on to number one. Yep. All right. Do you want to you want to start or do you want me to do it? Uh, I'll start. All right, go ahead. Mine's actually fantasy-based. Is it really? It's Frostmourne. Oh, the Lich King. Yeah, Lich King. Sword. Fair enough. So... I mean, it's cool. He kills you with it. It takes your soul. That's plus it's, it's cool looking. It's oh, it a, is pretty cool. I, I contemplated getting the replica. Um, so it's it's a neat looking sword, and it that does just the story. Like I said, I've always loved the Arthas storyline. So yeah, that sword's pretty neat. And evidently, the shards are coming back out in Legion. I think you can like rebuild it or something. Really? I was reading. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So see how that goes. I'm going to be very cheesy and go with the Buster Sword. The Buster Sword. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Cloud Sword. Um, I mean, there's nothing else to say. I mean, I, I was one of the people who played this game as it came out. I got a PlayStation for this reason. And the impression that it made on you is, for me, similar to what the lightsaber did. Right. I mean, it was just the most ridiculous weapon. He spun it. He put his hand out and spun it in a circle yeah. like a fan when you won a battle. Right. It's like, how is he doing that? I'm a kid. I don't know. It looked cool. Right. So, yeah, it was just, it's just a massive blade. And we've talked about this before where there's YouTube channels where they try to actually build this weapon and it's yeah. unwieldable. Mm-hmm. But he's powered by Mako. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Magic. <laughs> magic. Yeah, that's what it, it magic. Yeah, magic. It explains everything. <laughs> uh and it's funny that it's the most iconic sword you know attributed to him and it was like the beginning sword you guys so <laughs> it gets replaced so fast it wasn't even his yeah so oh it was zach zach's yeah it, you know the, it kind of killed me did you ever play that one on the psp no it's the um when you got to when you, you played play as zach zach's storyline or whatever everything you thought that was cool about cloud it was zach and you're like Zach is cooler. No. <laughs> Cloud, I think, looks cooler with the way his, his hair and stuff is. Right. But Zach's pretty similar. You know, speaking of it, Gen Con, did you see the uh, the Cloud walking around? Yeah, but he had he was so cheesy. You didn't like? Uh, we saw different clouds. Well, I mean, but he bought the sword. Oh, okay. It's like the pressure or the uh, injection molded one that had the latex over it. Oh, okay. It's not like he made it. it oh, okay. You could go spend fifty dollars and then. The rest of the costume's so simple. Yeah. No offense to that guy, but it's still cool. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It is cool to see a cloud, but it's kind of an easy costume. It's kind of like all the Harlequins. <laughs> I mean, you can pretty much go to any. You know, speaking of, we didn't see that many Deadpool's this year because they're all Harlequins. Because they're all. <laughs> Even the guys, even the guys. <laughs> they're all. Hard. It's like well, I have this stuff in my closet because right. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> no, actually. I, it's okay, but I mean, it's not a complicated costume. No. It's it's normal clothes, people. Yeah. And so, like, I feel like that the cloud is like in the, in the cosplay universe, without the sword, very basic. Oh uh, yeah. But the sword can be purchased, and you just look like a million dollars. Gotcha. So, anyway, clouds Buster Sword. Buster Sword. 